So in this video, we're gonna have a chat through the 10 things that can help you succeed in a new role, particularly if you're new into your career, you're on a graduate scheme, but say in a professional services firm. So these are 10 things that you can absolutely do that have got no bearing on your talent, your education, where you've come from, your social experience. In this video, we're gonna dive into the 10 things that you can absolutely control um, and make sure that you're putting your best foot forward at work. So the first thing, which may seem really obvious, but is being on time. And obviously this was more important in the physical world where quite often we'd have graduates who turned up late because they underestimated how long traffic would take or a route to a work or client. But being on time is like number one rule. In fact, like if you can be a bit early. And in the digital world, that's just as important. Obviously, we try to avoid digital presenteeism when we're on all the time. But if you've got a set working pattern or set working hours that you need to make, make sure that you're online, you're present and you're available for the team. The second thing is work ethic. So one thing that all professional services fans will look at is people who have a good work ethic. And that's not about um, like how quickly you pick up new concepts or how quickly you learn new things, but just about how hard you're prepared to work to make sure that you're understanding what you're doing and that you're doing it to a good standard. The third element is um, how much effort you put into things. Um, we can totally tell when graduates are coasting or just um, like sitting back. Um, so how much effort you put in and making sure that you're focusing your effort on the right things. So um, as much as the work's important, there are other aspects um, such as building your network, um, being a good colleague um, and making sure that you're putting effort into the right things at the right time. The fourth area is body language. And one thing that I would do as a manager is read the room in meetings, see who's using active listening, who is presenting good body language and who seems engaged in the process. Um, graduates often think that sometimes it's like a lecture hall and they could just sit back and kind of scroll through their phone or perhaps not be like fully present. Um, but people absolutely do clock that. And indeed in a digital world, it's just as important to show that you're engaged, that you are listening to the meeting or you're involved in the client meeting. Um, you can't just sit back or turn your camera off, like um, people will notice that. So making sure that you're using good body language and active listening techniques. The fifth area is energy and enthusiasm. So um, we don't want someone who's, this isn't The Apprentice, we don't want someone who's over the top, but what we do want is someone who shows enthusiasm and is glad to be there. You've probably gone through several rounds of interviews and assessment centers to get the job. So you should have worked out by now if this is something you want to do. So we expect a level of enthusiasm and engagement from our employees, um, not only in the work that they do, but also in how they approach the wider aspects of being in a firm, the social situations, the um, skills you can get involved with the challenges the, those other things so making sure that you you bring in your best self to work and you're enthusiastic to be there and an advocate for the brand passion is another thing we look at and don't get me wrong no one wakes up in the morning and is passionate about audit or accounting but you can be passionate about the clients you work with the type of sectors you want to work with and um, how you use networks and other forums within the firm so making sure that you're as passionate as you can be about what you're doing your career and taking ownership for it the next area is being coachable and I would say this is as important at the beginning of your career as it is towards the middle and the end of your career. As a graduate you're going to be taking multiple streams of feedback from different people, some of which might be conflicting but you need to be coachable because you are not the finished article, you've got um, a lot to learn and both with your professional studies but also with the type of work that you're doing, the clients that you'll be working with, the teams that you're working with. So making sure that you can be coachable, that you can take on people's feedback and areas for growth um, in a positive way and use it as a tool to approach your work in a better way going forward. The next area is doing extra and I don't mean in terms of doing lots of extra hours actually that's something we don't think is a good thing particularly for graduates but what I am talking about is making sure that the product that you're turning out is at the highest standard it can be so sometimes it's worth taking the extra time just to make sure it's proofread it reads properly you've included relevant graphics everything's um, referenced properly um, and just make sure that it has as little work that needs doing it by those who are reviewing it as possible. So we can all get to 80%, that's not difficult. It's just making sure that you're doing the extra little bits that will polish your report, polish your work and get it over the line. And the final area is being prepared. If you're going into a meeting, make sure that you've done your preparation, either with a client or another team member. Um, just turning up and winging things is not kind of acceptable in professional services. You need to have made sure that you've done your prep and that you're ready to go. And equally, when it comes to performance reviews, your coaching in, um, meetings or your one-to-ones, make sure that you've got a list of things you want to discuss and that it's not a one-way conversation with your manager. 
So those are 10 things that will help you succeed in a professional services or any other graduate role. Um, I'd love to hear what you think, or if you think I've missed something, uh, leave it in a comment below. My name's Liz, I'm a partner in a large accounting firm, and my channel Simplification teaches you the tips, tricks, and hacks to help you navigate your career.